Hello everybody, I'm Prowl, and in today's video, we are going to learn how to avoid the warden. We do have the Minecraft Deep Dark Experimental Snapshot right here, and I've seen a ton of videos explaining what the warden is, what the ancient cities are, and generally showing the gameplay and like cool stuff about it. But today we're going to look at what really matters. We're going to look at once you find a deep dark city, a inch, an ancient city, how do you actually avoid the warden and get the loot that's in there? And what kind of loot is there? Let's go ahead and let's jump into game now. So here we are in a random seed and we're going to talk about how to find an ancient city. So they're not very common and there's nothing yet that tells you how to get to one. It's very different from, say, a stronghold where you get an eye of Ender, throw it, and it leads you usually to a city, like a, a village, where you dig underground and find a stronghold. It's not like that. So hopefully they add something in. I think they probably will, because as you're about to see, they can they can be a long ways away. So there's two things you can do. You can do for now, if you're playing around and just trying to find it, you do slash locate biome deep dark and i'll tell you where a deep dark biome is wow that's like four thousand like see you would never find this if you were just exploring it'd be impossible four thousand three hundred and sixty five blocks away or you could do slash locate ancient city and wow okay so that's really weird we have an ancient city 2080 blocks away but the deep dark is 4,365 blocks away. We're very early in the experimental snapshots here. So I'm not quite sure why those two are different. And I'm going to make sure I report it to them to let them know that I don't think it's supposed to work that way. So here we are at the location that it said a ancient city was at. And as you could tell, there, there's no indication above ground. We're in spectator mode. So I'm just going to take us down there. But to actually get to one of these, once you have a way to find it, whether that be some way that they add into the game or whatever, um, you're just going to have to explore down into the caves. As you can see, though, and as you travel down, you may see various areas like this that shows that you're in a deep, dark biome. Now, in this case, we're at about Y level zero right now. You can tell by the stone that we have here and here. Let's give ourselves night vision so you guys can see. There we go. And right below us here is the deep, dark city, the ancient city. I don't know why I keep calling it a deep, dark city, but I do. Now, I've seen these spawn in ways that intersect other biomes, such as a dripstone cave, for example. And, and depending on how you find yours, it may be somewhat easy to navigate. Like this one's not going to be that bad or it could be really hard to navigate because it has another biome intersecting it. And I don't know if they'll fix that. Maybe it's not supposed to be that way and they're supposed to be more intact like this, or maybe they, they're supposed to sometimes be jumbled up messes. I don't know, but this is what your layout of an ancient city looks like. Now, why should you find an ancient city? Why should you risk invoking the wrath of the warden? Well, well, right now, as of the time of making this video, there, there's not really a reason there. They added in the uh, the speed, the sneak, the speed sneak. What is it called? They added in the swift sneak enchantment, which allows you to move faster when you're sneaking like this, when you're in your crouch down. But the only time you'd ever really need that is when you're here. So if you don't plan on coming here, then you don't need the enchantment to begin with. So that's not a good incentive. We're early on in the process right now, so I assume they have something planned and I'll talk a little bit later about what I think the incentive should be or some ideas I have for it and at least what I think they should aim for and we'll talk about what I think of the overall experience so stay tuned till the end because I have some interesting takes first what should you bring with you when you go all right so outside of the obvious of you know wearing good gear or maybe you shouldn't wear good gear because if you get like aggroed by the warden if, if he's going to hit you you're going to die um, at least unless you cheese it, which we're not going to get into that. Cheesing it basically means finding a, a really like cheaty way to kill the warden, like by doing this, getting three blocks above him and just punching him because um, they're going to get rid of that kind of stuff anyway. So it's probably not going to be possible. So what things should you bring outside of your normal equipment? So let's go over it real quick. Um, you're going to want to bring a hoe because that's what you use to actually get up the skulk blocks and mine them. And preferably, you want that to have silk touch on it so you can actually collect the blocks. If you don't have silk touch, you can't collect any of the blocks. Um, you're going to want to bring an anvil with you. So that way, when you find the soul sneak enchantment, 
you can actually apply it to your boots. Now, it is not compatible with Depth Strider, which I know most people will already have on their boots. So you may need to bring a fresh pair of boots as well to apply it to outside of your Depth Strider boots that you may normally be wearing. Um, you're gonna need some kind of projectile. Um, a bow with arrows is gonna be good or snowballs or eggs. Any one of those things should be fine. I'd probably avoid the eggs because then baby chickens might hatch and then who knows what kind of crazy stuff's gonna happen. So snowballs or bow should be good. A splash potion of slowness. This actually isn't a bad idea because the warden, when he gets mad at you, he runs fast. There's no getting away. Like you're, you're done once he, oh, that one's 15% speed. Why do I have that one? I don't want that one. Um, so get you some uh, potion of slowness fours. So that way you have a 60% speed decrease and make sure it's a splash one. That way, if you anger the warden and like your, your life is slashing before your eyes, you, you could throw this at him and then you'll be able to get away. You'll be able to run away. So good idea in case of emergency. Do not break in case of emergency. Um, also, you're going to want to bring some wool um, the wool we can use to block the skulk sensors and the shriekers. So that way they can't get a signal out or get or receive a signal to call the warden. Um, you're going to want plenty of torches so we can light our way. And we're going to want plenty of some type of a building block not normally found down in the deep dark area. That way we can e easily distinguish it from other blocks. because so we're going to use this to mark the areas where we've already been. That way we don't continually double back and get lost down here. Oh, and if you have it, it's good to have a uh, potion of night vision as well. We're just gonna use the effect here um, in creative mode, but a night vision potion will potentially help you out quite a bit as well because it's really hard to see down here without it. And especially when that darkness effect hits, it's extremely hard to see. Let's take a look out at the area before we go through how to actually avoid the warden. So generally speaking, you're gonna have this like big, like portal-ish looking thing in the middle. It's really awesome. It's actually made out of a new block called Reinforced Deep Slate um, that is unobtainable in survival Minecraft. You cannot obtain it. Um, it is able to be destroyed, although it takes a really long time, way longer than Obsidian. And it is movable by piston, which I don't know if that's an intended feature or not. Uh, we'll find that out in the future. As of this time, I'm gonna say we don't know if it's intended to be moved by piston or not, because I don't see any reason to move it by piston at this point in time. Um, and I, I've been given this prediction, I'll give it again. This is gonna be a portal to an ancient world. I, I just, I can feel it happening. It's gonna happen, a future dimension, a future like new thing is gonna come to Minecraft. It's gonna have to do with this right here. But looking at the area around that, you have like these really cool like little areas. Look, you have these uh, redstone lamps and I don't know why some of these end up getting waterlogged but super cool as you can see when you make noise there's a skulk sensor in there like above it in there that can hear you walking and it lights up the lamps so i really thought that was like a really cool thing for them to kind of like in game way show that like how a skulk sensor works and that it's uh, actually can be used to power redstone devices so that's pretty neat but more big picture if we take a look at this place it's really made of a lot of different corridors um you kind of have this like central area it's almost kind of like a keep and i don't really i don't really fully understand it because they don't really have like any kind of pathways that make things accessible which means navigating through here is gonna be difficult you're going to need blocks to pillar up and down with or you'll have to break your way through so Let's see, let's start like wherever we would potentially come in from into this cave and we'll kind of take a look at it. So going out from here, once you get past this part, you do have this walkway that kind of circles around the whole place. This would maybe be a good place to start to try to organize yourself on where to go and where you've been. Um, keep in mind, you can walk on wool. It will not make sound. So you don't have to worry about setting these things off when you're on the wool and all around here are additional corridors, sort of like this one right here that you see. Um, these would be good ones to travel down, check to the right, check to the left, and mark off in some way as you go. That way you know that you've been here. And then you have all these little pockets where there are like loot segments. You have like a little, I guess this is supposed to be like a warden head right here. Just like this one's kind of a big version of the warden head. This is a little tiny version of the warden head. It's really, warden head is really cool. 
Um, you have these little like altars where you have skeleton skeleton skulls. That's really awesome and neat. And lots of candles. If you don't, if you want a candle farm, this is the place to come apparently. And the loot chest, which at this time, like I said, do not have anything super special in them. Some skulls, blocks, and sensors, and books and stuff. But like in a soul, uh, this is actually not even the the sneak book. It's a flame book. Um, but like nothing in these loot chests at this time makes me think, oh yes, I want to go around and search all the loot chests to get all the loot. So hopefully, again, we'll talk about that later. Hopefully they add that and add something to that or change it by the time you watch this video or throughout this development process, depending on how late into the process you watch the video. And then guarding this area are Skulk Shriekers and Skulk Sensors. And I accidentally set one off and you're going to see, oh, he didn't emerge. That's interesting. So you'll see as you make noise in here, the Skulk Sensors are going to talk to the skulk shriekers so placing blocks breaking blocks placing torches walking all those things will make sounds for the skulk sensor to hear and then it will send a signal out to skulk shriekers whether it be one or multiple in the area now it does have a range to it so it can't infinitely place them out but just know that they can they can send a signal out and they can send it out far enough to reach you know, close by sensors like this one. Now, as we go through, we're going to talk strategy. And when those skulk shriekers go off, you see the little, you hear that kind of howling sound and you see the little effect go up in the air. Once that happens enough, the warden appears. So that's what you don't want to do. You do not want to set these off. Although we'll talk about instances where you're not going to be able, you're not going to be able to help it. One really good way to not set off the skulk shrieker is by liking the video, dropping a comment, and subscribing to the channel. Those things help out the channel immensely. I do do this as my full-time occupation. So if you like the video, donating that thumbs up button helps out a lot. And if you'd like seeing videos like this, uh, let's play videos, guide-based videos, I do a lot of different things here on the channel. So make sure you click that subscribe button so you don't miss the next awesome video that comes out. Also, for engagement purposes, go ahead and drop me a comment down below. YouTube Analytics loves it when you drop comments, when you hit the like button and the subscribe button. It helps the video get seen by more people. And we want people to see us. We don't want the warden to see us. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to go through one of these cities and try to avoid detection by the warden. As you can see, I don't have any armor or anything on, but I have given myself a resistance effect. That way, we we like here, I can't I can't die to anything because I don't want to die and have to start things over. It's not really important to the video. Um and we will show you dying to the warden later just so you can see how like powerful he really is. But for now, we're going to throw ourselves into survival mode and I'm going to show you how to best navigate through and avoid the warden. And really the first portion of that is holding down the crouch or sneak button pretty much all the time. Now, when you get to the edge of a block, you can't just drop off, but you can hit the jump button and jump down. And as long as you're not like fall taking fall damage when you do it, it's not going to make any sound. So you're going to be safe. And we're going to do this until we're in an area where we think that we're safe from the shriekers. Now we're, we're coming into the city from like a cave like area. So this is similar to how you would probably enter. And then we're going to check up here because we're walking by this area. And as we can see, this is our first like loot chest area, right? Now I'm able to see really good here because I have night vision on, but this is going to be really dark for you guys. I'm going to leave the night vision on because it's going to be really hard for you to see the video and what I'm asking you to do if I don't have the night vision turned on. So we're going to creep around here and from best I can tell, there's only one Skulk Shrieker, which is which is right. Oh, there's two of them. They're right side by side. We have a Skulk sensor here, and I don't see any other sensors close by in the area. And ultimately, what we want to do is we want to keep this sensor from telling these Shriekers that we're here. Now, for this one down on the ground, I'm not sure. I'm not sure the best way to do it because you got to block it with wool to where it can't talk to these sensors. So I think what we're going to try to do here successfully, hopefully without summoning the warden is we're going to place three blocks right across here. And that should keep the sensor from sending the signal out and reaching these shriekers right here. So we're going to click really fast and if the warden appears, we're going to avoid him. 
Nope. Oh gosh. All right. We triggered it off. Is he going to appear? Okay. He is. The darkness effect has been applied. This. Oh no, he's not coming. All right. We're good. It just applied the darkness effect. Let's see if we can block it this way. Ah, that did it. Okay. So now we should be good. Break these. Yes. Okay. So this is the way you want to handle these areas because now you see, I can walk around here. I don't have to worry about summoning the warden in this area anymore. And we, we did let off one of the shriekers once. So we hopefully, hopefully things cool down a little bit and the warden doesn't come find us. Now, if you, if you have shriekers in the area, and if you have sensors in the area, it can hear you open these loot chests. So you don't want to just come in and open them because it makes a sound. And we have a Smite 5 book here. Now, as of right now, the Warden actually counts as an undead mob. So if you want to do more damage to it and try to fight it, which I don't recommend, Smite 5 on your sword or axe is going to be the best way to go. I don't know if it's going to stay that way because I, I didn't really consider the Warden to be an undead mob. So I guess we'll see if that's still going to be the case. In any event, we've finished this. Oh, we just set off a Shrieker. Oh, okay. So now that you see the warden crawling up from the ground. So now we need to avoid. We need to avoid and get away. So he's going to try to sniff us out. And it's going to be really hard to see. It's even like it's kind of dark right now for me. You're not going to be able to see hardly anything. If um, if you don't have night vision on. So what we're going to do is we're just kind of back up and listen for him. Okay. Oh, he's chasing a bat. <laughs> so we don't have to worry about him. Um, although I don't know if that bat's going to like permanently keep him alive to where he's always in the area. Oh, nope. He, he totally just killed the bat. Okay. So he's going to wander back around. And honestly, we're it's, it's going to be hard for you to just find a way to get away. So you might have to do like one of two things. You can like try to distract him and maybe I could like jump over there. Gosh. Let's see if we throw this. Now we've gotten ourselves far enough away. We can back up. You got to wait about 60 seconds for him to disappear. If you get far enough away, the darkness effect will not apply to you anymore either. Now, eventually, like right now, the warden. Yeah, he's gone. He dug back underground. So after about 60 seconds, he's going to dig down back down underground and go away. And the best way to tell is just to listen for him. Once you don't hear that heartbeat anymore, you know that you're safe. So. We know that there's a Skulk Shrieker now on the other side of this. I do want to mark this as complete. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to sneak up here. And I know the Shrieker is more that way. So I should be able to fill her up like this and just kind of mark this area. And now I know that I've been there and I know not to come back to this particular one. And I'm going to continually creep around the corner here and into different areas and kind of do things in the same way. Ooh, if we look over here. There's two sensors and there's two shriekers. So this this area right here. This is going to be one that we just want to avoid, right? Because I don't have a way to block off one of them without the other one going off. So we're just going to stay away from this. We're going to get over to this direction far enough away to where the sensors can't hear us like somewhere around here should be good. And we could get up here and then we have uh, we have carpet to walk on. So we don't have to worry about making sound on the carpet. And we're just going to continually move down these corridors and try to keep some sort of sense of where we're going. You know, it sounded and looked a little bit easier when we were doing it and looking from above. Once you're down here on the ground, it's not so easy really to keep track of things. So we're just going to keep looking for chests. We'll kind of go all the way down to this end of the corridor. We can kind of tell. There's going to be a chest up there. We're going to repeat the same process we've been doing. Uh, we should be able to get up and down from here pretty easily because you can place a wool block down and they won't hear it, but they can sense it if you place it down on the um, on the, the skulk. So we're going to place it down there on the on the um, deep slate. And it probably you know what this probably tells me. It's probably worth it to bring more than a couple stacks of wool if you can. But look, we'll creep up here again. You see, we got two chests in the area. We have a skulk sensor. I don't see a shrieker anywhere. 
That doesn't mean that there's not one, but I can't see it. So maybe to be safe, what we would do, get rid of this uh, sensor right here. And I just realized I was still in creative mode right there, but it's fine. We played it like we were in survival, but we should be good to come over here, check the chest, right? Check the chest, get whatever goodies that there's going to be in there and mark off this area as being complete. And then to mark off that we've been through this area, maybe we like we could put some white wool like right here too. And then maybe just so we don't come down like this corridor again, whenever we come across an intersection like this, we just block it off. Now, sometimes you're going to find yourself in a situation like this. I just broke this skulk sensor. It still let out a shriek. And I think it came from out here. And I'm pretty sure we're going to be in a situation here where it might be no matter what we do, we're going to have to summon the warden. So I think what our plan is going to be, maybe we'll like pillar up there to get out the way. So let's see what happens if we can break this first. Ah, yes. Okay. So if he comes. We're going to pull ourselves up. And we're still going to try to avoid him. Right? He's going to try to sniff us out. But hopefully we're far enough away to where he can't... He can't hear us. Yeah, he's walking away. So whenever you're in this type of situation, find a place to hide. Usually going up is going to be the safest bet. Use wool so he doesn't hear you go up or go down whenever you place it or break it. And you don't set off the shrieker again. And while we're up here. Oh, gosh. And see, he's coming our way. I don't know if he's going to be able to smell us and get angry at us. Potentially for any of you guys. Oh, he's. Lure him away. Oh, he went away. Okay, good. And then we'll be able to get ourselves down. And I think I don't think we'll upset anything because it's wool. Now it's possible if you're watching this video later on that the warden has methods to get players that are up high. So that's why I'm saying now it's good to get in the habit of still being quiet as you do things. Now, what I don't know is if I can open this chest or not. Sometimes you're just going to have to act because I have no clue if I can open this chest, what it's going to do. So have a game plan before you do things, before things start getting dark, right? So we're going to open the chest. Actually, here, let's even get up here first. We're going to place this block here. Place this block here. It's probably going to set off a shrieker and we'll just we would just do the pillar up strategy again. Open chest, take goodies out. Warden comes, pillar up. Maybe give him something to chase, right? Just to kind of get him away from you and off your trail. You have to wait five seconds at least before you shoot another arrow or do something else. Or he'll get angry. And then now, like he's kind of far away, we should be safe. Again, remember, your vision is going to be clouded when you're doing this. And eventually, when you complete this process enough times, you should end up with something like this, where you have numerous areas marked off so you know that you've been to them. And if you can put a torch on the very top, that's even better because that's going to make it so even when it's dark in here, you don't have night vision. You can more easily see the areas that you've been um, raiding one of these places. It's not going to be easy. Honestly, it's probably going to be the hardest structure in the game to raid because of so many opportunities to spawn the warden, because you're going to have to move slower, because you're going to have to keep a lookout on skulk sensors and skulk shriekers. And it's not really easy to see in here and to navigate around, even if you have an elytra, which is probably going to make things a little bit easier because you can kind of fly around, at least in some of these ancient cities, probably not all of them. These places, like a lot of the areas look very similar to each other. Maybe your best bet is to do it by segment, come up to like the big portal like area and just kind of like do an area at a time. Know that you're going to do everything in this direction. Mark it all off. Mark off what you've done that direction. Come back. Know that you're going to do everything in that direction. Mark them as you do them. We got one there. There's some back there and then mark off that area to know that you've done it and that side and that side all the same until you've had the whole thing cleared out. As you can see, 
there's a lot of chests, a lot of loot chests here. Some of these are doubles, like here. Uh, I think there's two there too. Some of them are singles and they're all over the place. And I think these uh, ancient cities, they can spawn in various sizes too. Various sizes, various shapes. Uh, it looks like it's a very like structure spawn, like segmented structure spawn where it like it can spawn a, a corridor and then it can spawn a like a, a double loot chest area or a single loot chest area and it just randomly puts them around in different areas it's not easy to navigate around it's not easy to find everything so you're going to want to keep yourself organized you're going to want to follow all the tips that i've provided to make sure that you avoid the warden so finally what are my thoughts and opinions on this well first of all the experience of the deep dark it's perfect I, whatever it is that it seems like they intended to do I think they achieved it 100% A plus. Like I don't think I don't think experience wise I would change anything about it. Now, what's lacking so far is the incentive structure. I have no real reason to come here currently. But it's already been alluded to by King B Dogs and others on Twitter and in streams and such that they're, they're not done with that part yet, right? This is an experimental snapshot. So we may see more things like loot and maybe a use for this thing. Although my guess is we're not gonna see that quite yet. Um, and maybe other reasons to come down here too. So what should be the goal? What should be the target of that, right? And to me, the goal and the target should really be to emulate kind of what end cities do, but maybe even take it a step further. So we go to the end to get an elytra and to get shulker boxes, super valuable. There's a reason to go there and continually go back there maybe multiple times so that way you can fill up on these shulker boxes and fill up on extra elytra to have for your adventures if you die and lose it or something like that so the deep dark the ancient cities they need something in that realm now i had a cool idea i don't know if they could implement it or not but there's a lot of chests that are in here what if each one of these chests has a different piece in it and those pieces, maybe nine of them, spread throughout randomly throughout the, I don't know, 15 or 20 chests that are in here. What if when you find those nine pieces after going through the whole city, you can craft them together to make some sort of like powerful item that is like a better version of the beacon, maybe, or I don't know, does something else, right? Whatever it is, whether it be something beacon related, so you can insta mine deep slate, get new effects, or some other item that I have no way of like guessing and figuring out what it could possibly be. Regardless of which way they go, that should be the goal. We need to have something here that makes me want to come the first time and explore the whole area to find this precious or these precious items. And we need to have a reason for me to want to come back after the first time. The deep dark, the ancient cities, they should not be something where it's a one and done. And I have 100% faith that they're going to get there. I can't wait to see what Mojang and the developers have planned. If you enjoyed this video, if you found it helpful in any way, go ahead and drop me a comment down below to let me know. Find that like button. Give it a little bit of a love tap. Don't smash the like button. It'll break it and the next person won't be able to use it. And click the subscribe button to the channel to get more awesome videos like this. I thank all of you for being here, for hanging out, for watching this video, for watching the bat fly right at my head. And I'll see you next time. Bye.